Hello everybody, and welcome to another one of our detailed ACC track guides on the Traction Channel. Today we tackle the most recent addition to the game, which goes by the snappy title of the Autodromo Internazionale Enzo Edino Ferrari. You probably just know it as Imola, and what a track it is. Despite its 14 year hiatus from the Formula 1 calendar, Imola has never stopped hosting a massive variety of top level motorsport, from touring cars to superbikes and of course GTs. It's a dynamic circuit that you really have to attack to get the most out of on most sims, and the set of Corsa Competizione is definitely no exception. It's only appropriate then that we have selected the new 2020 Mercedes AMG GT3 as our weapon of choice, as it was released on the same day and is the perfect car for launching an aggressive attack on a circuit. Let's jump into the analysis, and spoiler alert, get ready to hear the word curb a lot. As you cross the start line, tuck yourself in nice and close to the pit wall to shorten the so-called straight as much as possible. Drift over to the left, and again as the track kinks to the left, shorten it as much as you can. As you exit the kink, you need to drift back over to the right hand side of the road to prepare yourself for the Tamborello chicane. Start braking just as you pass the orange paint on the wall signalling the access road. Brake in a straight line, sliding out towards the right hand side kerb and change down to second. Just before you reach the end of that white kerb, turn in and aim to place the left hand side of the car right over the yellow sausage kerbs on the inside. This is why we have chosen the new Mercedes over the new Ferrari for this track, as the Merc rides the kerbs without any problem, something that will really help you throughout the entire lap. Just as you reach the apex, get off the brake and straight on the power, and as you exit, quickly change direction and fire yourself fully over the curbing on the right. Try not to let the car drift too far left at this stage, as you need to be able to haul yourself back over towards the middle in order to take the next left flat out. Again, turn in, aiming to put your left wheels over the sausage curbs, just don't use quite as much for this one as you did for the chicane, as it's easier to get a track limits warning here. Open out your steering, and as usual, utilise the exit kerb. As you approach the Villeneuve chicane, stay to the right and put two wheels on the entry kerb. Halfway between the 100m and 50m boards, brake, turn in and change down to third gear. Again, you want to use all of the inside curbing on this apex. It's important not to attack that left hander too hard on the entry, because you need to be in enough control to keep your car over to the left when you're preparing for the right hander. Just after you're through the kerb, straighten the wheel and start braking for that right hander. You want to be in second gear, and again, aim to place your car all the way over the available kerb on the inside. Be careful again not to carry too much speed in here, as you will find yourself understeering into the gravel on the exit. If you get it right, you should be able to reapply the power as soon as you're over the apex and still keep the car on the road, using all of the exit kerb in the process. Haul yourself back to the right and you want to brake just after the 50 board for the Tosa hairpin. Here, you are going to want to aim for a mid to late apex, so run the car into the corner on the brakes and as you enter the turn, you should slow up just in time to be able to increase the steering lock and cut back across on the power to hit the apex, putting your left front on the Italian coloured kerbing. I'd recommend starting in first gear for this corner, but as you get more precise and smooth, staying in second might be the quickest way to go. Open out your steering and, you guessed it, use all of the exit kerb. On the run up the hill, stay to the right and maintain this position throughout the right hand kink. You should come over the crest all the way over and with a straight wheel in preparation for Piratella. Break just after the 50 board, changing down to third. The camber on this corner pushes the car slightly to the outside, so you actually want to turn in fairly early for this one to compensate. Put your left wheels on the flat green kerbing, but avoid the sausages on this occasion. It might be a setup thing, but on the aggressive default this particular kerb isn't quite as friendly as its mates. Get on the power just after you hit the apex and use as much of the runoff area as you need. If you carry more speed, you can actually use slightly more than I did on this lap. Just watch out for your favourite white line police by keeping your left hand tyre touching the black stuff. Keep your steering lock on and get yourself back over to the left. Next up is the infamous Aqua Minerale. In terms of corners, the most similar thing you can find on ACC is probably Degna 1 and Degna 2 at Suzuka, but this one is more of a challenge. The kerbs are bumpier, the braking zone is shorter, and it's generally a more difficult section to get right than the one at Suzuka. On entry, put your left front wheel on the Italian kerb. Turn in and start braking as you aim to hit the inside kerbing with your front right tyre. Change down to third as you approach, and then just before you hit the kerb, get a little bit of throttle back on for a split second to balance the car. Then immediately afterwards you want to straighten your steering as much as possible and shift down to second whilst completely abusing the runoff area. As soon as you are stable and down to second gear, put your steering lock back on and aim to get your front right tyre over the green apex curbing. If you get on the power just as you hit this point and your speed is right, you should be able to naturally run out onto the runoff area on the left, but keep the right hand side wheel touching the tarmac to avoid a track limits warning. I appreciate there's a hell of a lot going on in this corner in a very short period of time, and it's a tricky section, so I'd recommend watching it at full speed a few times after listening to my description in order to get a feel for how it looks in real time. Hopefully you've been able to catch your breath on the run to Variante Alta. Stay to the left and start braking as the entry curve begins. Change down to second and start turning in just after you go under the banner. Now it's time to absolutely abuse the curves. Haul the entire car over the yellow sausage curbing on the first apex. 
then change direction, again completely smash the yellow curbing on the second. Be careful not to apply full power too early here as it's easy to run wide and invalidate your lap, so just be a little bit patient. You can use all of the exit runoff you need, again the limiting factor being the white line. Straight line the run down the hill as much as possible, staying over to the left to prepare yourself for the right hander. Keep it pinned and use the inside curbing to set up the braking zone for Rabatza 1. This corner is pretty horrible. It's slow, off camber and the downhill braking zone makes it a very tricky approach. All the reason then to get round it as quickly as possible and make it go away. As soon as you straighten the car up after the kink, start braking hard. If you want a specific reference point to look for, the 100 meter board is probably the most appropriate. As you get close to the corner, turn in nice and early to compensate for the camber. Still on the brakes, change down to second and aim to put your left wheel on the apex curb. I was a tiny bit wide on this lap, so had to delay getting on the power slightly, but if you maximise the inside curbing, you can squeeze back on the power soon after and it will find you another tenth or so. Use the exit curbing and before you reach the end of it, get back on the brakes and turn in for Rivazza 2. Here you want to hit the curb on the inside once again, and depending on setup, you can probably use the yellow sausage curbs as well. Get on the power nice and early, use the exit curb as always, and stay right as you fire down the pit straight, cutting the kink after the pit entry. And that is the end of our lap around the magical Imola. Now let's play you it at full speed to give you an idea of how that all flows together. Here's the lap time I set in this video, as well as a couple of laps for you guys to aim for. Am is a good starting place to be when you're learning the circuit, Pro Am is good for online racing, and the Pro Time is the kind of time you'd expect the aliens to be setting in a qualifying session online. So that concludes our track guide for Imola. As it's the newest track on the game, it's worth giving it a go in a few different cars before choosing which to use for a race. The Mercedes seems a sensible pick, giving all of the curb abuse, but I'm sure there are others that suit different parts of the track even better. Either way, it's huge fun in whatever you drive. Just before I leave you, here's my 10 second tips for mastering Imola. Abuse the curbs through Tamburello, abuse the curbs through Villeneuve, late apex for Tosa, abuse the curbs for Curatella, abuse the curbs for Aquaman and Rally and practice a lot. Abuse the curbs at Variant Delta to the point where you might as well ignore the corner, survive Ravazza and abuse the curbs while you do so. Nailed it. Thanks as always for watching and we really hope you're getting something useful out of this series. If you have suggestions for what you'd like to see in the future, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you've been enjoying the series so far, it would be hugely appreciated if you could leave us a like, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more racing game content like this. In the meantime, keep it pinned, abuse the curbs, thanks for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>